So far, we have programmed 6 ROS nodes and we started each ROS node with the ROS run command. For example, the sensor underscore info underscore publisher was started like this and the sensor info subscriber like this and of course, not to forget the ROS core command. And more so, we needed a new terminal each time to run these commands. Particularly, in the action client server example, um, we had to quickly switch between terminals to view the feedback topic and the client output while the server was still processing the goal. Well, doing this with two nodes is probably okay. But when we have to juggle around terminals when 20 to 30 ROS nodes are running, it can become quite a circus. It would be nice to be able to start all our ROS nodes together and in one terminal, isn't it? Then we can have an overview of what happened to the startup of all nodes in one screen. That's where ROS launch comes in. The idea here is to group ROS nodes we want to start in one file. Note that the code for all these nodes are still in separate files, but we will just group all these files in one location. And that file is called a launch file. And in ROS, the format of this file is XML. And once we have such a file, we can start all the ROS nodes specified within this file with the ROS launch command, like this. And it also starts the ROS core for us. So, a launch file not only allows us to start up all nodes, but also provides a lot of possibilities. For example, it allows possibilities to pass arguments, node specific parameters, and also namespaces. And those are not the only possibilities. We can do much more with launch files. But in this video, we will focus on the arguments and node specific parameters, and we will learn more about launch files as we go along the course whenever necessary. It is also possible to include launch files from different packages in one launch file. In fact, we could just have a ROS package which contains only launch files and no source code at all. So, where are these launch files located in the ROS file system? Launch files reside in the launch folder within a ROS package. And it is also common practice to follow this kind of naming convention where the names start with a package name and then a file name from which we can make some sense of what kind of nodes the launch files will start. For example, hrwros underscore week one underscore service dot launch. Let's now look at a quick example then. We have the hrwros underscore week one underscore servers dot launch file. Here, we specify an argument that can be passed to this launch file from the command line. We will soon look into how this works. And this is how we can specify how to start the service server ROS node that we created in the ROS services module. Notice that the name of the script specified here is actually the script and not just the node name. Similarly, we can start the action server ROS node here. What we can also specify is a node specific parameter so that we can simply pass an argument to the launch file instead of actually having to change the source code. For example, here we can see that the counter underscore delay underscore param argument to this launch file is being used to set the value of a parameter called counter underscore delay which in turn can be used by the action server ROS node. Now, I will not show you how to do that, but you will do that yourself in your assignments for this week. All right then, that concludes the ROS launch module.